Hi guys, uh, the Hover Air X1 is proving for me at least to be an incredibly useful tool for quickly doing follow type shots without the hassle of a much larger drone. Now in this video I'm going to show you a number of common mistakes that are easy to make when you're first using this little drone. It's coming up. Okay then, so this recently released Hover Air X1 camera is growing in popularity due to its ease of use. We simply just unfold the drone, press the button for a quick shot, and then off we go. Now, one of the modes offered on the uh, drone is a follow mode. As the name suggests, in this mode, the camera will follow behind the user at different distances and heights. But after using the hover while traveling for a while, I've actually made a few mistakes along the way. So in this video, I'm going to show you the mistakes that I made so that you're not going to make them yourself. Now, first of all, number one, starting off with the most serious mistake, and that is actually forgetting to check which mode the hover is in before launching. Now, I often assume that it's actually in the follow mode um, as it's going to default to switching on from with the previously used mode and the follow mode is my most frequently used mode. But it's actually very easy to accidentally press the mode button here when handling the drone and you're not actually gonna notice. Now, this can actually easily happen if the voice that announces the mode is actually switched off, which I've done um, in the options just to make the drone a little bit less conspicuous to anyone around. Recently it happened where I didn't actually check the mode and when I launched the hover it flew off in the opposite direction to which I was expecting and it was actually really close to a very large rock and actually now really avoiding crashing into it. So this leads to the second mistake which is forgetting that the drone does not actually have any horizontal object avoidance. Now when I forgot to check the mode, by chance the backwards droney move which I selected is where it flies backwards and upwards. Now there's certainly unfortunately no object avoidance, so I was actually very lucky it didn't fly straight into the huge rock, so that would have ended the drone for sure. So number three, the next mistake is not setting an appropriate distance for the follow mode. Now I found that setting it to a close distance results in the drone uh, often pausing while it waits for me to move onwards. So this is probably okay if it's following you on a bike, maybe going at a constant speed, but walking over the rocks or through undergrowth where you might stop to gain footing can cause the footage from the camera to be more jerky and less fluid due to the pauses. So I found a more appropriate distance for walking activities to be either medium or far. Now the resulting footage can then be more fluid and constant due to the less pauses and the jerking around of the drone. Now the medium and the fast settings will also mean that the environment where you're walking is shown much more rather than your own backside, which is probably not what you want. Unless of course you've got a particularly nice looking backside of course. And that takes us nicely on to number four. So make sure to set an appropriate height for the follow mode. Now the options are low, level, and high. For example, if you're navigating through scrub with a narrow path with boulders around, it will be inadvisable to select a low height, of course, or even a level height. Now it's gonna be much better to choose high level due to, to lessen the risk of the hover hitting an obstacle. Now number five, now that is to not trust the drone's amazing tracking technology. Now it's very tempting when first using the camera to keep looking back to check that it's actually following you or not. Now if you do so, it's gonna to totally spoil your footage. However, make sure you remember the duration you've chosen for that particular shot. Now I find it's actually too easy to lose track of time because you're enjoying yourself and then find out that the drone movement uh, was set to say 30 seconds rather than the minute that you thought and you find that the drone is left behind somewhere as it stopped executing the move. So the hover itself does have a uncanny ability to navigate itself through obstacles though, despite its actual lack of object avoidance. 
So he actually managed to successfully follow me through these rocks, for example, I'm going to show on the video here. Okay, friends, and that's a very quick list of mistakes that are easy to make as a beginner using this little drone. But don't let these put you off using the hover. Just make sure you're aware of them and then you'll have a lot of fun using them. And of course, if you found this video and advice useful, I'd appreciate if you could show some love to the channel by hitting that subscribe button as I'm trying to reach the first 1,000 subscribers. And I certainly need your support going there. So I would appreciate you guys.